So everyone out there who makes a living pointing out systemic discrimination, ask yourself, is that really the reason for your shortcomings? Or could it be, could it just be that maybe you've been looking your whole life for an excuse as to why, why you can't, while other people of the same color, race, gender, orientation, take your pick, do. So here's my question of the day, and you can uh, tweet me at Escrat or just comment below. Before we get into the, the, the next topic, as you look at the country, how do you see the country? Do you see any empirical evidence today for systemic racism, for institutional racism, as opposed to anecdotal, which I believe is the fuel on which our media runs today, entirely anecdotal uh, evidence? Yeah. Comment below. I'm, I'm really curious to see. And wh why do I say that? Because Starbucks is now set to close more than 8,000 locations for racial bias education. The company said the training would aim to address implicit bias, teach employees how to prevent discrimination, and promote conscious inclusion. Employees will receive the training on, and the stores will close for the afternoon of May 29th. This comes on the heels of protests, of course, after two black men were arrested at um, one of the franchise's stores. Yep. Now, first off, let me just be honest about my biases. I like my protesters how I like my coffee. Actually, with lots of half and half in that tin that I think is cinnamon, <laughs> but I'm not really sure that it's cinnamon, but I accept it as cinnamon anyway. That's how I like my protest. <laughs> so before we move on, you thought I was going to be a zig and then we zag. So, no, no, some millennials may have good work. I, one thing I'm tired, I'm tired of millennials being the whipping post. I understand there are a lot of millennials out there who have good work ethics, okay? I don't think that everyone is lazy and whiny, and they do end up creating great technology. Some of them are innovators. But the reason why millennials are seen as whiny is because of stories like this. Yep. Because they create and find discrimination where there is none. The reason your grandfather isn't super sympathetic to your cause is because he was shot at by Nazis in a foxhole. Let's read the next quote, as opposed to you, with the Starbucks and the re Education. The protests broke out at that Starbucks location on Monday, and demonstrators said the arrests were indicative of institutional racism. <laughs> that word. <laughs> I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> it does not. So we're now declaring a Starbucks Dictionaries incident are your friend, folks. to be institutional racism. Yeah. And, and I know they're saying because the cops arrested Esther, but again, the, the, the police were called from the Starbucks. I think yeah. it was loitering. Yeah. Who knows what happened there? But again, we're going to protest over institutional racism. Let, let's look at what this actually, the definition of institutional racism is as follows. Institutional racism is a pattern of, so, of social institutions such as government organizations, schools, banks, and courts of law giving negative treatment to a group of people based on their race. Now, I'm not saying that we haven't had institutional racism in this country, and it still exists elsewhere, as you see with indentured servitude. Some examples of in the, in the United States, for example, being barred from drinking from the same water fountain as whites. Mm. Kind of fixed that with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Or being prohibited from attending uh, all-white schools. The Brown versus Board of Education case. These are examples of institutionalized racism. Not being kicked out of a Starbucks because you refuse to buy something. But I, I realized doing this, I did have to check my white privilege a bit because... Um, what with me not remembering the oft conveniently ignored portion of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech. I have a dream today that all men would be able to loiter without purchase at their local Starbucks or Donuts Duncan, or if they so desire, along with any of their colleagues, be able to purchase a $4 macchiato or $9 cold brew. I have a dream. Preach. So here's another example, as opposed to institutionalized racism, they are just aching, the left, people like Sean King, who tweeted this out, they are just aching to find a reason. They use these anecdotal examples as a launching pad for institutionalized racism. Sean King just tweeted this out, this video. Let's, let's, let's watch the video and look at what Sean King tweet. This, roll the video, roll the video. So this is the How you doing, bro? black guy who uploaded and caused all kinds of outrage. Did anyone tell you that uh, you look like someone familiar? No, no, I never got that. Yeah, yeah. Have you, have wanted, you to to wanted to use the restroom. Wanted to use the restroom. No, but I was just about to go. You about to go purchase yeah. something? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So, but before you made a purchase, they let you use the restroom, right? Uh, I just typed in, I asked for the code. You asked for the code, and they just gave it to yeah. you, right? Before you made a purchase. Yeah. Okay, all right. Come on. My white go. guilt forced you, you to answer the affirmative. Well, I was going to get everything food. you asked. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Come up here with my iPhone 10. <laughs> so, this is Weston. And Weston hadn't made a Watch purchase yet, you guys. So uh, I would like Starbucks right here on Redondo, on right Artesia, and Hawthorne. We need to stop recording this right man right here said he hasn't made. He said he hasn't made a, a, a purchase yet. He's in line to make a purchase. And you guys haven't. You guys. You guys had gave him the code. 
right? Is it that what you did? My business right now. No, this is not your business. This is not your business. This is not your business, though. Okay, you may be a store manager, but you're not the. You're not. You're not in charge. Don't miss that part. I'm not. I'm not allowed to be in here anymore. There you go. You see the minority manager wants to be with me, Weston. What did I do? I just tried to use a bathroom like you did, and they got to be an aggressive. Oh, is it my skin color? Is it my skin color? Rodney King. Rodney King. Use bathroom, but Weston could. Amen. I feel it may be my skin color. Hey, but this is this is about to be on social media. It's about to go in the shade room. There we go. World Star Hip Hop, World Star Hip Hop, World Star Hip Hop, bye bye booey, bye bye booey. It is absolutely crazy. So, so again, you watch that clip. This just shows me that people like Sean King, they don't even care anymore. When we've had clips that we roll, uh, we've gone, hold on a second, wait, wait, we're, there's some context there. Sometimes, yep. I think it was a pro-gun clip at one point. We're going, oh, what happened? That might not have been justification yeah. there. Yeah. We don't run it. In this case, you clearly see there was a prior conversation to this that occurred. A cop was there and ready, which means they were probably already called before this incident went down. This guy is acting like an in, just an indignant ass. And, of course, there's the white guy who was just intimidated beyond. Yeah, was he even I mean, really? He didn't even look that white. <laughs> no, I don't even know what he was. So, again, let's compare this to examples of actual institutionalized racism, like being prevented from voting because of race, right? We had the Voting Rights Act. We kind of we made some progress there. Uh, being forced, to, not being allowed to sit at the front of the bus. That was a big one, yeah. right? Rosa Parks, she, revolution, sitting down. Good for her. Now, almost all... All of these movements today, if you contrast institutionalized racism, and if you look at that, by the way, they were they were won legislatively. Mm -hmm. They were won through education. Yeah. Whereas in this case, these incident, these modern day well, tweet movements, that. <laughs> tweet, <laughs> these modern day movements are won by keeping people in the dark. Almost all, let's look through all of the major movements in recent memory, and they uh, the catalyst was something anecdotal. So Black Lives Matter, it started with Michael Brown, mm. the hands up, don't shoot, lie. It was the anecdote. It wasn't yeah. about police brutality. It wasn't about the actual statistics, as we've covered on the show. When you look at the fact that you're actually more likely to be shot as a white uh, young American than a black young American, statistically, we've talked about that. Go read it at letterscutter.com. It wasn't about that. The Women's March, the p***y had economics, right? That was based on an Access Hollywood tape, the grab by the p***y. Who can forget that? That didn't have anything to do with the wage gap, which is non-existent. It didn't have to do with economics. It didn't have to do with unfair treatment in the workplace. It was based on an Access Hollywood tape. That was the catalyst for everyone marching on down the streets in hats, which are now not allowed because they offend trannies. Rape Super culture. Offensive. <laughs> rape culture. Now, this, this one is a little bit more complicated, but rape culture has become a part of the societal vernacular from a few main stories. It was a Duke Lacrosse case, the UVA rape hoax, the Rolling Stone article, and Mattress Girl. And guess what? All of them turned out to be hoaxes. These were the anecdotal cases that were used to say there's a rape culture on campus. From, from people like Lena Dunham to celebrities talking about how there's a rape culture on campus. Clearly, the evidence is... No, there is no evidence that's in your favor. It's the, the, as a matter of fact, there is zero evidence. Just like there is zero evidence that women are oppressed, and there is zero evidence of systemic, institutionalized discrimination and or racism. But rape culture, now, they just... People believe it. People, You have Michael Ian Black yeah. on the show. You believe it. Naomi Wolf believe it. These are people who are professors. Barack Obama believe it. They're like the Muppet guys, only instead of, yep, it's rape. In the media goes along with it. It's the anecdotal evidence that is used as a springboard uh, to mislead people. So here's what this is too, by the way, for people out there who use the guy in 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 the, the bathroom. You know, I'm gonna do let's say I'm talking, I'm gonna do you a service, okay? It's hedging your bets on failure. It's giving you an excuse for your poor behavior, for your failure, because you chalk it up to some discrimination that doesn't exist. That's the reason people use this right now. That's what Black Lives Matter is. Michael Brown and the live hands up, don't shoot, excuses the burning down of Walgreens and destroying your neighborhoods. CVS, I guess I got that wrong. Yeah, Walgreens CBS. is a funnier word to say. Yeah. The grand by the p***y comment is why you can't find a job because you spent $50,000 on a gender studies degree. It's a reason for why you can't go into a little girl's bathroom despite having put on a dress and really, really, really wanting to. It's because <laughs> President Donald Trump said grab him by the p***y. It's all because of systemic institutionalized discrimination, which you prove through your antidotes. A antidotes, anecdotes. It's hedging your bets, justifying your failure and your crappy behavior by acting as though there's some kind of barrier to entry. And in the United States, I can say definitively there is none anymore. There is no institutionalized barrier to success based on race, gender, or orientation in 2018. None. None. Zero. Unless you're an Asian with a higher than average SAT score, there are too many. Go back. We don't want you. There are too many. Get away. Get away from Stanford. We don't want your kind around here. So when activists like David Hogg say that old people don't know how to do democracy, remember, they didn't know how to, how to preserve their democracy, so unfortunately we're going to have to take care of it for them, that little ah, piss ant. Well, here's the thing. These people who don't respect millennials, they actually fought for democracy. They actually died to save our democratic culture. We can go back to the World War II vets. That's why they appreciate it. 
That's why they think that you're a bunch of arrogant, ungrateful little piss ants. But let's even just go to back to Vietnam. Those veterans came back because they were fighting communists in an unwinnable war, granted, with JFK turned into a quagmire. Either way, they, any way you line it up, they were fighting against systemic oppression in one form or another. And guess what? They came back only to have people spit on them. That's why previous generations are not sympathetic when you say, oh, I, I have to take a shit at Starbucks, but they wouldn't let me because of institutionalized racism. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're going, no, 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 Hold on, Vietnam vet here. You're just an asshole. <laughs> and you know what, by the way, that entire video, you know how that entire video could change the context? That lady at the front desk could have asked both of them whether it was number one or number two. So, oh, I've just got to pee. Oh, okay, no problem. I got to take a massive dump. No. Is it because I'm black? No, it's more about the massive dump thing. <laughs> I'm not saying that's the context. I'm trying to provide you, if they're gonna provide anecdotal evidence, with some context that might change it. So everyone out there who makes a living off of or, or, or pointing out systemic discrimination, ask yourself, is, is that really the reason for your shortcomings? Is that really the reason people have grown tired of you? Or could it be, could it just be that maybe you've been looking your whole life for an excuse as to why, why you can't, while other people of the same color, race, gender, orientation, take your pick, do. You can't and they do. But, you know, granted, um, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm always surprised. It seems like MLK Jr. was ahead of his time. I have a dream today yeah. that all men, regardless of color of skin, Free. can pinch a loaf at their local coffee house without repercussions. And that Sean King would tweet that sh Hey, did you like this video? It, what, you didn't? Oh, you're a cat person? Well, that makes sense. Disregard him and or her slash Z. Everyone else, hit the subscribe button and leave your comment below as to why you like this video. Hey, you know what, crazy cat, you can get back, you can, you can comment below too as to why you don't like it.